In this clip, we will focus on the notion of a converging sequence and the limit of a sequence. What we mean by that is, well, just consider the sequence a n equals 1 over n squared. Then what we see is by taking large values of n, we see that a and the values of this sequence, the elements in this sequence, tend to zero. Yeah, for large values of n, a n is about zero. So here we see in a graph, you can see that the that this is actually a decreasing sequence and that the values a n approach zero. What we mean by that is that uh, by taking n large enough, the elements a n are arbitrarily close to zero. Yeah, just by taking n large enough, we can find elements a n as close to zero as we want to. So we're going to specify what we mean by that. What is actually arbitrarily close? What's that? Well, we look at the distance of the elements to zero. So let's see what we find here. So can we find, well, what is arbitrarily close? Can we show, for instance, uh, that at a certain point in the sequence, all the elements a n minus 0, absolute value, so this is the distance of a n to 0, that it's smaller than 1 thousandth. Can we show that for n large enough that this holds true? Well, actually this, this we have to deal with solving an inequality here, so the absolute value of a n minus 0, smaller or equal than 10 to the power minus 3, is of course equivalent with solving this inequality, so the absolute value of 1 over n squared minus 0, smaller than 10 to the power minus 3, and 1 over n to the power 2 is of course a positive number, so this is equivalent with 1 over n squared, smaller or equal 10 to the power minus 3, which is equivalent with stating that n squared should be larger than 10 to the power 3, so n squared should be larger than 1000, so we should take n at least this, uh, the square root of 1000. So if we take n this large, larger than the square root of 1000, then we know that uh, actually the absolute value of a n minus 0 is smaller than 1000. So if we look at the index number, if n is just taken larger than the on j of the square root of 1000, yeah, so which is indicated by this capital N over here, then a n minus 0 is close enough to 0. If we say that 1000 is the desired inaccuracy. Okay, but still we can debate whether 10 to the power minus 3 is the desired accuracy. Now what if we need another inaccuracy, say say some, some number epsilon larger than zero. Well, we can proceed in the same way. We question for what n can we find, for what n does it hold that the absolute value of a n minus zero is smaller than the desired accuracy. Yeah, so what we do here is actually now with a more general term, epsilon, that we try to solve the inequality. A n minus zero absolute value is smaller or equal than epsilon. Well, just as we've seen before, this is just equivalent to 
1 over n squared is smaller or equal than epsilon, or n squared should be at least epsilon minus 1, or n should be at least 1 over the square root of epsilon. Yeah, so for all those, for a given epsilon larger than 0, we can find actually n satisfying this condition. So this provides us a recipe for any given in accuracy epsilon larger than zero. We can prove, we can show the existence of n such that a n minus zero absolute value is small or equal than zero uh, epsilon. So in that case, we would just say that the limit of n to infinity a n equals zero, since we've shown that for by taking n large enough that a n minus zero is smaller than any given inaccuracy. So this motivates the following definition. So the limit of n to infinity a n equals L, so the limit of the sequence a n equals L, if for each epsilon larger than zero, yeah, epsilon is again the inaccuracy that we take there, for each epsilon larger than zero, there should be a capital N, uh, a natural number such that if we pick larger indexes, N larger than capital N, then the difference between A N and its limit should be at most epsilon. So here we see what, what happens. So here we have a plot of some sequence and we'll show that actually here L is the limit, the limit value. What should happen? Well, here I have L and the, for a given precision epsilon, then I should be able to conclude that L plus epsilon, L minus epsilon, that in the end, by taking n large enough, it should hold n large enough, it should hold that the whole sequence afterwards is in between those red lines. Yeah, so actually what it says is that for each given given inaccuracy epsilon larger than zero it should be possible to find an index n epsilon. Yeah, we should, there should be a number n epsilon. Yeah, why do we write n epsilon? Well, usually this number will depend on epsilon. Yeah, as epsilon is smaller, then n epsilon is usually the bigger one. Yeah, so this is depending on epsilon. So. For such a number, and, and there should be a number n epsilon, such that all points on the graph of the sequence should be, yeah, so this is the yellow part over here, should be in between those red lines. Yeah, and in between those red lines, if we are in between those red lines, we know that the distance to the value L, L is at most, L plus epsilon, L minus epsilon, so any element a n in between those lines has a distance to L which is at most epsilon. Well consider the following example. So here again we have the geometric sequence a n equals r to the power n minus 1 and now we consider an r which is an absolute value smaller than 1. What we will show now is that the limit of this sequence is zero. Well, what we need to do is following the recipe. So take an epsilon larger than zero, which is supposed to be arbitrary, but fixed. Yeah, once we've chosen epsilon, we'll keep it fixed. Then we try to solve for n. And we try to solve for n such that the absolute value of a n minus zero, or the distance for a n to l, where l is now the zero, should be smaller or equal than epsilon. So now we can just plug in 
our formula for a n. So the absolute value of r to the power n minus 1 should be at most epsilon, which is equivalent with stating, well, we can take the powers out. So r to r absolute value of r to the power n minus 1 should be at most epsilon. So now we take the r log on both sides, you know, r absolute value. And by doing so, we know that since r is in between, r absolute value is in between 0 and 1, that the inequality sign that we have here is now reversed over here. Yeah, this is just due to the fact that the absolute value of r is in between 0 and 1. So the r log is a decreasing function. And by doing so, we can take out the power m minus 1. So we get m minus 1 times the r absolute value log r absolute value is larger or equal to r absolute uh, value log of epsilon. So in this case, we're almost there. Since now we have that m minus 1 is larger than the absolute value of r log epsilon. Yeah, since the absolute value at the r log of r is in general equal to 1. So now we know how big n must be chosen. So n should be at least the r absolute value log of epsilon plus 1. Yeah. So if we're looking at the first index number at which is, uh, this occurs, then we can just take the rounded off value or the on j of the value on the right hand side that we find here. Yeah, so take the on j of this function of epsilon and then we're there. So as a conclusion we find the following. So for a given epsilon, for a given epsilon larger than zero, then if we take n at least as large as capital N epsilon which is the number defined as the number uh, as the entire of r absolute value log epsilon, yeah, the rounded off value plus one. Then we know, then we're sure that we've, uh, uh, then we're sure that the absolute value of a n minus zero or the distance from the sequence to its limit is smaller or equal than epsilon. So this shows that the limit of a n for n to infinity equals zero. So now let's wrap, wrap up. So we've been studying geometric sequences and the corresponding limits for different values of the ground number r. Yeah, so let's have a, a short summary of the things we've been discussing so far that we found. So so let's take again the most general formulation of a geometric sequence, which is a n equals r to the power m minus 1, for instance, for some r unequal to 1. Then what can we say about the limit? The limit of a n for n goes to infinity. Yeah, so the limit of a n for n to infinity. Well, we distinguished uh, uh, several cases. So uh, we've seen that the limit is infinity if r is larger than 1. Yeah, so in which case we have a divergent sequence. Just a minute ago, I've shown that the limit equals zero for r with absolute value smaller than one. Yeah, unequal to zero. Yeah, so r should be unequal to zero. And we also know that when r is smaller or equal than minus one, we have an alternating sequence and 
Uh, an alternating sequence is always divergent, at least when it does not converge to zero. So if r is smaller or equal than minus 1, we have a divergent sequence. So we actually, in summary, we only have a convergent sequence. Yeah, the geometric sequence converges exactly when r is unequal to 0, but belongs to the interval minus 1, 1. Yeah, the open interval where minus 1 and 1 are not included.